Hello. Hi. Mr. Brad Martin? Yes. Yes. This is Beverly Hale, the IT director for the county. Good morning. Uh, sorry, I missed your call earlier, the uh, 10 hour delay for the schools. I was uh, trying to get my kid ready on the bus. Oh, okay. Um, so I just wanted to return your call and see um, what questions you had for me. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, sort of, I guess what I'm trying to figure out is, all right, so. Well, hold on just one sec. I have one other thing. Um, you know, I want to thank you for on your YouTube video. Last night I listened to it on the way home, and it is not an IT problem. No, I, I don't believe it's an IT problem at all. I think the I'll, I'll be perfectly honest. I think the clerk's office is trying to pass the buck and and say that it's your guys' fault. When in reality, this is a uh, what is it like? I'm not, I'm not an IT pro or anything by any means, but from what I've read, I think this is user defined activity or something of that nature. I believe that this is, you know, I think this is something that the clerk's office handles and they're trying to shirk that responsibility. Um, and, and I sort of, I don't think you guys have done anything wrong, so I would like to, you know, state that from the beginning. I'm trying to sort of prove that it's not you so that I can try to um, um, essentially pursue some sort of remedy to have the clerk's actions addressed in, in this regard. Um, I'm, I'm very big on public information, and there's things that are supposed to be, you know, entered on my case for remote access and they're mandated by a court order, and the purpose is so that people can just access access these documents from my case. It's you know it's 2020. The whole purpose is the convenience, and also to to take a, a bit of workload off of the clerk's office, where people are able to just go online and, and look at something. They're not as likely to call or come in to get it. Um, so. I'm I'm a very big fan of I guess what you the the wheels that you grease essentially um, you make a lot of this happen, so I don't I don't think it's appropriate that they sort of blame it on you when they know that it's something. And I've went through this with them several times. They're able to correct this. That's sort of another way that I know that it it, it can be fixed in their office. Um, but they they chose to say that it's an IT problem. So in that. <laughs> Let me explain to you what our position is with Odyssey. Um, so when somebody gets a new PC, like in the clerk's office or something to that effect, we install Odyssey. It's a client that connects directly with the state. We have a login to test to make sure it will open and they can work. That's all we do in Odyssey. We're not allowed to scan anything into Odyssey. You know, we're not allowed to change, make any changes in the Odyssey. That is truly a clerk or court, you know, position. The IT department does nothing but make Odyssey wrong. Right. Um, what, what I went to the council meeting the other night and, you know, I made a presentation on what we were requested, myself and Mr. Lewandowski from maintenance was requested their because there are these books and these file cabinets everywhere of old cases and old court orders. Right. Um, currently, what my department and, you know, Larry was gracious enough to find space and um, donate actually one of his people to this project, you know, per the council and commissioner's request, that we can start scanning in the old RJL books, which is the judgment and orders. Correct. That's all that we need. So we started Superior 3. Which are um, generally public records, so it wouldn't compromise any sort of um, access restrictions, I would assume. Correct. Anything that we are scanning on is public record. They right. are just ju judgments and orders, but no, we're not scanning them into Odyssey, because again, we don't have that authority to do that. These are, and these orders and, and um, judgments would be attached once the clerk's office scans in that case file to Odyssey. Because we're only dealing, right now we're dealing um, RJOs from 1990. I think we're up to almost 2000. But these are just, they're none of the supporting documents. It's only the signed judgments or orders from the from the courts. Right. So, 
we're scanning them into a PDF document, you know, and we're separating them by court. You know, in the future, right now, we're just working on Superior 3. And then um, I presume those would go to some sort of a, like a database where the clerk's office would then have access to all of them. And then as they entered these documents on the docket, they would be responsible for making them either public or not public. Okay, so these documents, again, are just closed cases. So we are not scanning them into, so we just basically created a share, and we are scanning in PDF documents of these orders based on date, on the court and on the date. All right. So in, so, that's yes, just the, the old stuff that's already public. That. Things that are, um, like, so if I went and filed something now, the clerk would be the one to scan it in um, into the system and put it on my case and all that. Correct. And then whether or not it's public or not public would fall on the clerk. On that green paper. And, and, and it's still the green paper that makes it confidential, but that would have to be. Right, in right. Um, and that's the thing is I'm, I'm a real big advocate for public records and stuff, so I'm, I'm familiar with the green paper and the, the yeah. access to court records for the public and admin rule 9G and all that. Um, so what I'm, what I'm trying to figure out is, all right, um, I guess YouTube, you mentioned my YouTube. That's a very good example because I've kind of compared it to this. If I upload a video on YouTube to my channel, I have the options of making it private, um, public, scheduled to be public at a later date, and then I can do some, I think it's unlisted, where it's, it's you know, able to be viewed by anyone who has the link. So if I send you the link and you send it to somebody else, kind of thing. Um, this is just a, a click of a button, flip of a switch kind of thing. I presume that based upon my like four years of experience as a pro se litigant going back and forth with the clerk's office. This is what they have um, built into the system. And I've spoken with the Office of Judicial Administration, the Office of Judicial Qualifications. Um, I was actually transferred to the governor's office. I spoke with the attorney general. I've, I've talked to all these people. It's, it's reverted back to the county clerk. And, you know, they're trying to put it on IT, but... Clearly, it's not you guys. So how do I get, I guess, training manuals for, you know, for the clerk? To my understanding, they would undergo some sort of a training that would teach them how to manually enter this as a, as a PDF that's able to be downloaded from my case. Um, that's sort of what I'm trying to, I guess, public records request or, or ask from the IT department is, I would like to be able to read whatever the clerk is taught as far as their interactions through this system. Hold on just one second. Look something up. And I don't know if um, I've, I've read a little bit about, you know, what your department does. Um, I don't know if you guys, is it laser fish? Is a document management system. So, yes, it's a database. So, this would, would sort of. OCR everything. So, that means if I had a, you know, 10,000 documents with, and I wanted to find, you know, whatever documents that had your name associated with it, I would type in your name, it would search all 10,000 documents, and then it would show them to me. Um, so, it is that easy. <laughs> Me? They typically require me to give them a cause number one at a time. I always ask them if they can search my name so that multiple cause numbers will come up for me to address all at once. Um, anyway. I know on my case you can search by name. Yes, you can. And that's usually what they tell me that they're looking at is my case. So. Um, but that's the way that we were going to have laser fish set up, is so you could search by name. Um, as you know, the council approved money for that, but then Kathy, it was out of some fund that they had, and and our county clerk decided not to allow us to use those funds. 
so the laser fish thing is not happening. Um, you know, and that's why we are just doing the RJO books right now. Um, we are scanning any RJO book in and going to make those available. And our our aspect of it is to clean up that area to make it easily accessible through you know their computers and. If we have to keep those books, then to store them in a correct location, you know, locked, secure, dry room, and get them out of the floor or off the filing cabinets so that we can free up some of that space. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it looks pretty cramped from what I can see from, like, the, uh, the public eye, I guess, when I'm, you know, running around in that building. Um, they're, they get a lot of filing cabinets, I know that. They do. Yeah. And, I mean, the council and commissioners have requested from Larry and I that that's what we try to do. It's to find some place to, you know, hug these books, but yet make them accessible. So that's why both of us are involved. Um, Larry's, the, like, the maintenance working. guy, ain't he? Pardon me? Larry's, like, the, the maintenance guy? Is the head of facilities, yes. Okay. So he basically is, you know, anything that we need moved and set up, and he has put one of his people scanning, and then I have two of my part-time people dedicated to scanning all these RJO books. Um, you know, I'm going to run out of part-time money, and somebody's going to have to give me more because I never accounted for that, you know, whenever our budgets came up. I would, I would literally volunteer to help you do this. Yeah, I don't know if they would let me have you. <laughs> Anything that would remove an excuse for the clerk's office in their duties. Um, so, yeah, um, is... It would be nice to see if I can uh, find any of those documents online. Yeah, I Go right ahead. You have been more than helpful. Uh, like I said, you know, I have nothing to hide. I try to help out all I can. So, I mean, anytime you have a question that I can answer, I'm more than willing to answer that. I appreciate that very much. I know any, it's uh, available documents out there to give you instruction. Um, the other thing we could look at is Do you know if um I know that a lot of the training there seems to be some sort of like union like organization for the clerk's office called the um the Association of Circuit Court Clerks of Indiana, they provide training that's mandatory by statute. Would they have something in regards to um, teaching a clerk how to navigate through the My Case system, perhaps? Well, if you go, if you Google Association of Clerks of Circuit Court of Indiana, which I assume you probably have done. I've spoken to them quite a bit. Well, they have a webpage. 
They do. What I'm what I'm looking for is not anywhere on their website, from what I can recall. Um, it's kind of vague, pretty basic. Um, even the the training stuff that they they offer links to and whatnot. Um, I know there's like a, a clerk's desk manual and some other stuff. Um, not much of that seems to cover like. You know, that's more statutory, you know, designations of fees and et cetera. I give your answer, and I, I mean, I don't know that I can provide it. It would have to go through, you know, the county commissioner to then would, you know, get approval from the county attorney. But there is a document out there. There's a book on Odyssey. It's in the health menu of Odyssey. So... I'm looking at it. I mean, it's all online, so it would have to be printed, I would assume, if you were going to have access to it, because, you know, you don't have a login for Odyssey. But there, there, under help, there's... Now, a as, a, as a pro se litigant, can I get an Odyssey login? I've seen something that references that, actually. I don't know that answer. That's okay. I can, um, um, I can look around. Yeah. Um, we have Odyssey. No, we have my face on the public machine. Yeah. Now, would Tyler Technologies have provided the county with anything? Tyler Technologies is the one that has created the program. Right. So when I get the help... Yes, their name is right at the top. So they should have that. Now, the thing is, is they are under a contract with the, I believe it's the Indiana Judicial Commission of Administration slash Qualifications. And they ba I spoke with Tyler Technologies already, and they, um, they basically referred me to the Indiana Judicial Qualifications Commission, who referred me back to the county, essentially. So then you have to file a public record request with our county commissioners um, because any record request that would come to me would go through the commissioners. All right. Um, I can do that. If that's approved or you know allowed, they'll let me know, and then I would create the, the book. Well, I appreciate now, I, it very much. Um, I can follow the rules on it. Do you, can you tell me how many pages that is, just so I can sort of estimate what the cost on this is going to be? Um, that's fine. I can I can probably just put that in my request to. I'm I'm sure Shaw will tell me. Um, I can tell you usually like if somebody requests our tax roll, you know, there's title companies and everybody out there that t request certain like full files, the full tax roll. They have to send the treasurer's office seventy dollars, and then the treasurer's office will notify me that. You know, they had received a check and to send them that file. Interesting. So, I mean, that might be cheaper. And that's by ordinance, um, you know, for any data requests or data exports. So, um, you know, that might be your best bet is to request the data export of that. If it's allowed, I don't know what the rules are on you know, giving you the full Odyssey manual. I don't, you know, you'll have to find that out. But if nothing else, if I could save it, you know, to a digital format, you know, burn it to CD or 
because I highly doubt I'd be able to email it to you because it's going to be so large. Um, well, that might be the route to go for you. Hmm. If I do this right, I might be able to just have a judge judicially notice it. Okay, I'm not sure what you mean there. Well, I mean, because the what the clerk of doing is essentially in regards to multiple cause numbers I have, I could try to use the power of the courts to, um, you know, essentially show that this was, you know, on the part of the clerk's office, I suppose. Um, if I can, if I can show that manual that shows that here's how it teaches how the clerk how to do this, and here's where it's nobody else's responsibility, or nor do they have legal authorization. It's pretty much the same effect of what I'm trying to attain there. Um, but yes, the public records request route is. What? Hold on a minute, because this is on the internet. Yeah. When I let, let me give you a page and see if you can open it. I don't know if you can. Are you by a computer? I am always by a computer. Okay, so it's HTTP going. One second. Let me uh log in here. All right, go ahead. HTTP colon whack whack. So slash slash. Right. I N as in Nancy. C M as in Mary. S as in Sam. P as in Paul. R O D as in dog. Dot I N dot gov. Slash. Help. Slash CM. CM? CM. Uh, for like case management. All right. And then, I mean, you could try that one, otherwise, there's more to it. See if that um, yeah, it looks like Odyssey user interface. This is exactly pretty much what I was looking for. Yep. It is. You don't even have to call a request. It's out there online. Right. And this is honestly, the clerk's office could have probably given me this. Tyler Technologies could have. The Indiana Judicial Administration could have. So I'm sorry that, that the buck got passed along to you. But I am very thankful that you were able to, to basically tell me where this information was. Because this is exactly what I was looking for. You were very helpful, and I appreciate it's it very much. Well, I mean, it's public information. You were able to get there from your computer, so, I mean, it's not like it gave you something secret. Right, and that's essentially what I was asking for, was any any sort of public information that sort of outlines, you know, like a user-defined activity for Odyssey, and this is essentially, this looks like it'll answer just about any question I could have. Yep, it should. I mean... You know, I haven't actually sat down and read the book or, you know, the help files and went through it because I don't do any of that. Right. And my job is to make it work. Understandable. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm sure you understand it in a whole different aspect. Um, it's, you know, it does take a bunch of computers to make all this stuff happen, so. Right. But, yes, I appreciate it I very much. I'm very happy I could help you. Again, like I said, thank you for yesterday when I was listening and saying, you know, out there, because IT does get blamed for a lot of things when it's not really our fault. Honestly, they've they've tried to, like, put the blame on your department a few times, like, and, but yesterday I knew, I knew better, you know what I mean? Because it's, I have enough cause numbers in, in a few different courts. I have, you know, civil appeals, all sorts of stuff going on. Um, and there, it would, if it was an IT like defect in the software or something, whatever they were trying to say, it would be at least somewhat uniform, I would think, across, you know, it wouldn't just be three cause numbers in one courtroom, but I have 
you know, other cause numbers in three different courtrooms. And those, I mean, I can go right on my case right now and those documents are downloadable in a PDF. So, and I'm, like I said, in the, in the past, I've went through this with them, you know, over and over and over where I, I basically, it, I'm arguing with them that I, I believe it's within their power, just a flip of a switch. They're just choosing not to do it um, because, you know, they're, it's, it's all user design. Um, anyway, thank you very much again. Um, I got a errand. I got to run here in about 20 minutes. So I appreciate your time very much. And like I said, um, th by the way, thank you for watching my videos. Um, <laughs> You're welcome. Many... Well, somebody had told me that there was one out there about IT. So I, on my home last night, I listened to it in the car. And, and um, I was very happy that you said it's not an IT problem because you know, a lot of times I can't see anything out there. Right. Um, well, many county and city employees will usually not admit to watching my channel, though many do, but I appreciate you even telling me that you watch it. Um, most wouldn't even do that. But yeah, I, like I said, from the beginning, I didn't think that this was your guys' fault. I just thought that it, it's, a, this is a routine thing with the governmental uh, uh, issues sometimes. It's just blame IT, and it's, it's kind of, it's kind of ridiculous. So I feel for you in that aspect. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm actually glad that you got to see the video and sort of see where I'm coming from on it before I actually talk to you, so. Oh, I agree. Yes, that was very helpful. Um, and, and I'm happy I could answer, you know, it took a long time coming, but at least I was able to answer, you know, get to that point. Once I realized that it was a web address, then, you know, it's, it's available to anybody. I mean, yeah, and that's the thing is it's, that's a mindset of you finding it and knowing that it's public and being like, well, what's, you know, there, there's no harm that's going to be done. All I'm going to do is be helpful to the public. I mean, you essentially are a public servant. So you, you pretty much did this the way you're supposed to. Um, so it's, you know, it is odd these days for it to, to go this well. But I, I do appreciate it. I'm more than willing to help. That's good. We need more of that, that, uh, that gusto right there. Well, thank you. And you have a very nice day. You as well. Um, enjoy winter number five or six, whatever we're on well, now. Hopefully, this is the last one. I'm hoping. I am ready for spring. I am too. I need. I need to garden here soon. I'm kind of getting cabin fever, to be honest. Oh, I agree. I was looking at grills last night at Walmart. I'm ready to, you know, set up the grill and... And make and some have... brisket. Yes, I agree. I'm ready to set up the <laughs> grill and make some brisket as well. Yes. Well, so, okay, thank you very much. All right, thank you. You have a good day. Bye. You too. Bye-bye.